Make sure subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. As we head into the northeast, I think I-95, it's going to be a close shave where the rain and snow begin to mix. But you get into the interior, I think we could get some really big snows, especially in Pennsylvania and New York State, on where you live. Now, there's something that we call the wedge or cold air damming, which is going to have a big influence on your precipitation type across parts of the south. So this is just a look at one of the computer model forecasts, and it depicts a strong area of high pressure up here into the northeast with our area of low pressure down here towards the south. And I want you to focus in on what's going to be happening with that area of high pressure. Now, exactly how strong it is, the position of it, and how far south we can get that cold air to track will make a difference in the precipitation types here. Cold air is more dense than warm air. And because of the mountains that we have here through the Appalachians, that cold air just has a tough time getting up and over the mountains when it comes in from a northeasterly direction. So it kind of gets stuck there in place and tends to be very difficult to scour it back out and mix the air back up. Now, at the same time, that area of low pressure is going to be bringing in some warmer air, and that's going to ride up over the top of that colder, more dense air and give us different types of precipitation. And that's why we're introducing an ice potential with all of this. This could happen across parts of Georgia, through parts of the Carolinas, even into southern parts of Virginia. Now, our models are not agreeing on the placement of where that heavy ice may end up being, but kind of showing somewhat of a bullseye, at least somewhere into the central or western parts of the Carolinas. And it all has to do with not just the temperatures at the surface, right? We have to look at the temperatures in all levels of the atmosphere. So if it's cold and below freezing all the way up, we have snow. If it's cold below freezing at the surface, but a small warm layer aloft, it has time to freeze before it bounces on the ground. We call that sleet, freezing rain. It doesn't have enough time to turn back to that ice pellet, so it drops down on the ground and ices things on contact. That's the ice or freezing rain. And rain, of course, things are warm through all levels of the atmosphere. So, Chris, I think we're going to see a little bit of all of this uh, across some parts of the south. And who gets what? Boy, it could be just a couple of miles difference here. Regardless, I think there's going to be a lot of trouble spots this weekend. Uh, but a lot will have to come into to play for the precise precip type that folks may want, for example, being snow. A lot of yeah. folks don't want that ice and we don't want sleep. That accretion starts to add up on the roadways and the power lines weighs it down dramatically. Yeah, I always feel like ice is the worst kind of winter weather. I will take rain or snow <laughs> over that yeah. any time for sure. So confidence is lower across parts of the southeast and as well as I-95 quarter because of that. But the Midwest, our confidence is higher where we're going to see more snow than anything else. That said, a little bit of freezing rain potentially at onset. So that can't be ruled out across the region. Look at how mild it is right now across the Midwest. You're like, oh, snow? Really? It's 52 degrees in Des Moines. It's 46 in Sioux Falls. A fairly quiet day, the calm before the storm, so to speak. But that moisture is going to start coming in across the Dakotas as early as tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow night and then work its way southward. So you kind of use your imagination, the trajectory of where the storm is going to be going. We've got winter storm watches, which have been posted already in advance of this event. Event, and that includes a place like Des Moines, stretching up towards Sioux City uh, and then up towards Watertown as well. That's where we have the potential for six inches or more of snowfall. Right now, the models have been fairly consistent, especially into southwestern Minnesota and western Iowa, of the heaviest snowfall between I-29 and I-35. That's where a swath of 8 to 12 inches can be expected. And then notice the sharp cutoff. The Twin Cities probably not coming up with too much snow fall and maybe a couple of inches in a place like Kansas City where you could have some precipitation type issues. So timing things out with Izzy showing you this onset of the snow coming in by Friday morning. It's fairly quick for you across parts of the upper Midwest. We're talking about less than a day, probably 20 hours or so across the region. But I also want you to note some of these gusty winds coming in late Friday into Saturday. So that could create some blowing and drifting issues. And then this works its way down into parts of Missouri and the South. Chris?
they're going to have to uh, come into play to allow an ice storm to actually develop. And we can't just look at the surface temperatures. We have to look at all the different layers in the atmosphere that go up because sometimes normally it goes from warm to cold, but we can get warm layers in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. We can, can just wreak havoc on anything. And we've got high pressure, Arctic high pressure, that's going to be settling in with that cold air as we head into your Saturday and Sunday. And that will help to draw the cold air down just to the east along the spine of the Appalachians. At the same time, that low pressure storm system is going to work on trying to draw in some of the warmer moist air coming in from the south. And that overrides that front and warm air is more buoyant than cold air, which is more dense. So that cold air hugs right up against the Appalachians. The warm air goes over the top of it and we get either a wintry mix or we get that freezing rain and ice where it comes down as liquid and then ice is on contacts. And we're gaining more confidence in a pretty significant ice storm, especially I'm concerned about that threat across uh, parts of South Carolina, North Carolina, and into Virginia, perhaps North Georgia. That's the Euro model bringing the potential for crippling ice. The GFS says, yep, maybe a couple of spots with that, but farther off towards the west. So still a lot of details to work out, Tevin, because we don't know the exact track. Mm -hmm. But I do think folks in this area do need to be prepared to be without power. Yeah, most certainly a very uh, heavily wooded area of the country. It could be one of those areas that gets significant icing. So that's going to be one of the big concerns going forward, especially across some parts of the southeast due to winter storm Izzy. Welcome back to Storm Center. Hope you're all doing okay on this Wednesday. It's hump day and all eyes, of course, on what's going to be happening to end this week and go into the weekend and early next week. This is really a Friday through Monday event, and things get started across the upper Midwest, work their way down towards the south, and then eventually impacting the Mid-Atlantic and into the Northeast. So we have a lot of questions still as the exact track of where Izzy's going to go, especially across the south and into the East Coast. And that track is going to ultimately determine, I think, uh, the precipitation type along with an area of high pressure coming in. So this is a look at the GFS model, and it paints some pretty heavy snow where we have the highest level of confidence into our forecast track. It has less snow with a more northerly track here across parts of the south and then brings it up the coast with more rain along and east of I-95, more snow into parts of the interior. Now we'll take a look at the Euro model where we do have some similar Similarities, very similar here across the Midwest, right along the I-29 quarter and off towards the west of Interstate 35 is a bullseye for that uh, 5 to 10 inches of snowfall there. But the Euro is a little more bullish on the snow amounts across parts of the southeast and interior parts of the northeast, which could ultimately end up getting some big numbers. So showing you the progression of both of those models, there you can see the cold air coming in, low pressure developing and then kind of phasing together, working up towards the coast exiting out of here already as we head towards your Monday night and then a look uh, here at the Euro model which tries to bring it a little farther down towards the south and that would bring a colder solution here ultimately and then more of an inside runner too so we'll see uh, what happens on that track down the line so it's too soon to say what those impacts are but Tevin uh, we feel solid and have high confidence that this will be a very impactful winter storm for many mm. folks need to be prepared to change their travel plans, and many need to be prepared to be without power, too. Also, really windy conditions into the north. Yet a big dumping of snow. Yeah, a big wallop. Double-digit snowfall certainly on the table, especially into interior parts of the northeast. Still working out the details on the track of the low, and that is going to make all the difference for the haves and the haves not. So back to our top story. Of course, winter storm Izzy. We're expected to get all types of winter weather with this, and this is going to mess with millions of people across several states States starting into the Midwest. So this is a look at one of the last big storms that we saw in Des Moines, Iowa. This was winter storm Peggy from last February. So get those shovels ready, Des Moines, because Izzy is headed your way by the end of the week. Uh, this is going to be a Friday all-day event for you. You're under a winter storm watch, and we're thinking those totals are going to be closer to 6 to 10 inches of snowfall. The farther west and north you are, I think the higher those numbers ultimately are going to end up. Uh, being. So our confidence highest into the Midwest portion of our storm and Izzy, the beginnings of it already way up here. So this is going to go up and over the Northwest, dive down 
down the plains, work through the southeast, and then work its way up towards the mid-Atlantic and the east coast. So we still have a lot to work out between now and there. We've got a lot of real estate for this to cover, and we've got some elements and some phasings of disturbances kind of coming together to help make that storm a little bit more powerful, not to mention the position of the Arctic High, a big player into the northeast. We've got winter storm watches in effect from the North Dakota line with Canada all the way down into northern parts of Missouri. A watch generally gets issued in this part of the country when six inches or more of snow is going to be expected. And then we head into the southeast. This is going to be a late Saturday to Sunday event for you here. I think we're going to get some heavy rain that could bring in some flash flooding. We'll see a wintry mist and significant icing conditions and spots and then snow under the northern tier of all of this. The placement of all that thing, all those uh, different elements and precipitation types is going to be variable. This could change over the next couple of days. We still have a long way to go. And then where is the low going to go as it heads up towards the mid-Atlantic into the northeast? Is this going to veer off the coast and bring in some big snows or is this going to be more of an inside runner bringing more wet weather along Interstate 95? That's the solution I'm leaning towards a little bit. We'll keep you up to date. There's something that we call the wedge or cold air damming, which is going to have a big influence on your precipitation type across parts of the south. So this is just a look at one of the computer model forecasts, and it depicts a strong area of high pressure up here into the northeast with our area of low pressure down here towards the south. And I want you to focus in on what's going to be happening with that area of high pressure. Now, exactly how strong it is, the position of it, and how far south we can get that cold air to track will make a difference in the precipitation types here. Cold air is more dense than warm air, and because of the mountains that we have here through the Appalachians, that cold air just has a tough time getting up and over the mountains when it comes in from a northeasterly direction. So it kind of gets stuck there in place and tends to be very difficult to scour it back out and mix the air back up. Now, at the same time, that area of low pressure is going to be bringing in some warmer air, and that's going to ride up over the top of that colder, more dense air and give us different types of precipitation. And that's why we're introducing an ice potential with all of this. This could happen across parts of Georgia, through parts of the Carolinas, even into southern parts of Virginia. Now, our models are not agreeing on the placement of where that heavy ice may end up being, but kind of showing somewhat of a bullseye, at least somewhere into the central or western parts of the Carolinas. And it all has to do with not just the temperatures at the surface, right? We have to look at the temperatures in all levels of the atmosphere. So if it's cold and below freezing all the way up, we have snow. If it's cold below freezing at the surface, but a small warm layer aloft, it has time to freeze before it bounces on the ground. We call that sleet, freezing rain. It doesn't have enough time to turn back to that ice pellet, so it drops down on the ground and ices things on contact. That's the ice or freezing rain. And rain, of course, things are warm through all levels of the atmosphere. So, Chris, I think we're going to see a little bit of all of this uh, across some parts of the south. And who gets what? Boy, it could be just a couple of miles difference here. Regardless, I think there's going to be a lot of trouble spots this week.